Hi guys, Andy here and welcome back to the Scale Model Shed channel and in this video I'm going to be building the re-release of Vitaleri's Wessex UH5. And for painting the model I'm going to use the lovely SMS Premium acrylic lacquers. So while I'm showing you some of the kit plastic, I'd like to say a quick thank you to all the customers who have visited the Scale Model Shed since we opened in May, and also to those who have purchased from the website since it went online. The response we've had from all over the UK has been great. So thanks everyone, and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to be using this exterior photo etch set from Eduard, as well as an Eduard pre-cut mask set for the canopy. I remove the plastic parts from the sprues with a pair of flush cut sprue cutters and then clean them up with a number 11 scalpel blade. Parts are glued together using Tamiya Extra Thin and this is a very thin solvent that leaves no residue when dry. The cockpit parts are primed in black and this black is retained and used as the base colour for the centre console. While I've got the colour in the airbrush, the photo etch instrument panel is also painted. Dry brushing is used to pick out the detail on the centre console, and after pretty much all the paint has been offloaded onto a paper towel, the detail can be picked out using light brush strokes. The kit includes some basic interior detail and I use this blue to match the canvas colour used in these aircraft. Once all the parts of the interior are painted, they all get a coat of semi-gloss varnish. Deep brown panel line wash is used to create staining on the quilted panel behind the pilot. And then interiors wash is used to pick out detail on the floor of the cockpit and to dirty up the seats. I thought at the time I'm probably going to leave the side door closed on this model, meaning that most of the interior isn't going to be seen. But I couldn't leave it clean so I did a little bit of work with a dark wash to pick out the detail. And then using some enamel thinners, blended in some dried light soil. Then all the necessary holes were drilled and cut on the outside panels of the helicopter. And it's worth double checking with this section that you're actually drilling the correct holes because sometimes the instructions can be a little bit misleading. Dusty or rough edges can be cleaned up using a little bit of extra thin glue. A quick dry fit of the interior confirms that I've glued the cockpit firewall in the correct position. The windows are then glued into the fuselage using Micro Industries Crystal Clear. Mm -hmm. 
and before I glue the interior into position, paint is removed from the areas it will contact. And once all fits well, the fuselage halves can be glued together, and this did require some clamping. The nose is glued together in sections, so it's definitely worth trying it onto the rest of the model to make sure no adjustment is needed before the glue cures. The kit gives you two options for the instrument panel, but I choose to use the photo X section with the full instrument panel decal. The photo etch did need a little bit of adjustment to fit properly into its recess. Before I start cleaning up any seam lines, I mask off any clear plastic. So this kit was first tooled in 2012 and it's not the cleanest of kits. And it is going to require a little bit of work. So often you may get a slight step where two panels aren't quite meeting square. And I often find the easiest way to start tackling this is by using a new scalpel blade and scraping away the plastic, sculpt away the seam to create a clean level joint and this can then be sanded with increasingly finer grades. And finishing with a 2.5 to 3000 and then ideally a polishing pad. A quick flash over with some primer will show you any defects and any areas that still require extra work. Any defects or ghost seams can then be filled and re-sanded and the black primer will make it easier to see what you're doing. Once finished, panel lines are re-scribed and any rivet detail is reapplied using a rosy riveter. It was easier to do all the necessary filling and flatting on the front nose section off the main model. The instrument panel could then be fitted and the front end glued into position.
Often a join line of two sections is used as a panel line, but in this case this line shouldn't be there, so this was filled. The plastic pipework running along the side of the body was discarded and remade using 1mm soft wire. This allowed me to drill a hole and have it entering the rear cowling as it should do. Then after making up some additional pipe work using copper wire, it was time to start applying the exterior photo edge. The grill for the front of the nose had some shape put into it by pressing it into a foam sanding block. I used VMS's transfer fix to glue on the front screen. This stuff will never damage clear plastic and can easily be cleaned off using VMS's universal weathering carrier light type. Before I glued the front screen on I masked off the side windows as these would be difficult to get to afterwards. I don't know if this is something I did wrong or if this is common to these kits, but the front screen is a pretty bad fit. It seems like the screen is twisted, but either way I had a step one side and an overlap the other. Filler was applied to even out the step. Then before I started to sand it, I masked the canopy to protect it. So I build up a few layers of the Vallejo polyester filler and this gives me a good weight of material to start re-sculpting the moulded section around the bottom of the screen. And if at any point you can't see what you're doing, just apply a uniform colour and you'll be able to see much clearer. During the repair of this section I frequently use Mr Surfacer 500 as a high build primer sprayed through the airbrush. For precision sanding these Albion Alloys mini sanding sticks are perfect. And once I was happy I sprayed the whole model with SMS Grey Surfacer. And this is an acrylic lacquer primer sprayed straight from the bottle and lays down beautifully.
and as you can see the repair turned out ok so now we're ready to go straight on and paint our base colour. Our primary colour for this build is forest green but I'm going to spray the whole model in a much lighter olive colour first. Now let me tell you quickly about these SMS paints. These are a no fuss acrylic lacquer paint that are pre thinned to spray straight from the bottle. Whether you're doing fine work or spraying a large area I find these paints to spray consistently with no tip drying or splattering. I apply them in thin coats and they have excellent coverage and they dry to a durable finish. And I realise this is usually a personal preference but I find the colour tones themselves to be spot on. The Scale Modelers Supply is an Australian based company and I'm really happy to be one of only two of us currently in the UK supplying these paints. So that's one thin coat of olive and on its own it's far too light but it should help to give the darker forest green that's going over the top a more bleached out look. The idea with the paint on this model is that the original forest green has gone faded and patchy in areas all over the Wessex. So in many places on this model I'm going to spray the forest green in very light coats just to pull the colour away from the olive and give the impression of the forest green. I mask separate areas with masking tape and masking fluid to create different shades of green across the panels. This is done more prominently around the front end. Once done this stark contrast is lightly toned down by blending across with forest green. I create these dark patches by masking off the olive green using a masking fluid and spraying dark green over the top. I'm really not too worried about overspray as this is cleaned up using the olive and just adds to the shade variation that I'm after. I didn't use this very much but in some places a stencil was used to create some mottling. Once the paintwork's finished it's all sealed in using SMS clear gloss. And here I'm spraying straight from the bottle but I would suggest thinning at about 10% to help it to flow better using SMS thinners. The varnish was left for 24 hours to cure before applying the decals.
Microset is applied under the decal to assist its adherence to the model. Then Microsole is used to soften the decal and help it conform to any rivets and panel lines. Once the decals are dried for 24 hours, I apply a flat clear thinned by 10%. Paint abrasion back to aluminium was simulated using Mr. Colour number 8. Solvent based paints are great for chipping work because as they start to dry they go tacky. And this makes it easier to create more realistic abrasion marks. Applying chipping to the screen frames while the masks are still in place means that when the mask is removed there will be a nice sharp edge along the screen frame. Right, we knew this bit was coming and onto the oil paints. And as well as applying onto a piece of card which will leach out the linseed oil, I also use Abtilung's Matte Effect Thinner. A wash is created that isn't too thin and then this is applied to the aluminium chipped areas. And this will instantly tone down that bright silver. Sepia is also a great colour for simulating any staining or grime. Applying some clean thinners to the area first can then allow the oils to flow in a more natural manner. I'm going to use faded green pigments to create that kind of chalky texture you get with faded paint. And this technique with pigments only really works on a matte surface. Any areas of pigment that have gathered a little bit heavier and you feel you want to keep them in place, just apply some pigment fixer. Once this dries the pigment returns to its original state and you wouldn't even know it was there. Whew. 
A neutral grey oil is used widely across the whole model as a water staining and general weathering effect. And I didn't really have a plan for this section other than that I wanted it to look something like this. So I thought I'd let this section play out and it might give you a better idea of how I achieved the final effect. Weathering pencils are a great way of having a lot of control over what you do. And here I'm using graphite to add an extra layer of realism to any area where the paint has gone right down to metal. Throughout the weathering of this build I've been using neutral grey and sepia and washing my brush in the same white spirit. This sludge isn't wasted and it's really effective when blended with the sepia that I'd already applied. Any area of chipping that I feel like I may have overdone I touch up with a sponge using the Olive SMS. And finally, with no more painting and weathering required, the masking can be removed. Any overspray dust on the inside of the clear plastic, most likely from the varnish stage, can be easily cleaned with a cotton bud. Thank you. 
I simulate that the writing on the side cockpit windows has worn to become illegible. Next I adapt the kit to allow the blades to be folded. This is a nice well made blade fold kit from Scale Warship that includes 3D printed parts. When you drill the 1mm hole that the 3D printed pin slides into, you need to ensure that the pin is a nice fit but turns easily, as this will be necessary when you fit the blades. The first one I did, the pin got locked in and snapped off, so I repaired this using a piece of 1mm wire. The 3D printed hinge is glued onto the end of the blade and then the gap is filled with putty. And once I've managed to get the lid off my pot of MIG engine grime, this is used around the hubs. I prime the rotor blades in black, I then use an XF72 thinned with about 90% thinners to tone the black down. Often when painting anything in yellow or red, you would base coat in white to bring the colour out but in this case I was going for a more faded look so I went straight over the top of the black. Once all the painting's done the blades are given a coat of matte varnish. So now onto the blade holding bracket and the blade holder itself was bent around an old airbrush needle. The instructions tell you what length to cut the brass wire to form the arms that support the blade holders. It then gives you the sequence of assembly to ensure the blade holders sit at the right angle. And these parts were all glued together using VMS's 5K Flexi CA for photo etch. And then once this was assembled, all the glue joints were reinforced using PVA. And after a dry fit, the photo etch was then primed in black before being painted. The exhausts were first painted copper over the top of a black primer, before being lightly sprayed with a silver, still leaving some of the copper visible underneath. The wheels were a bit of an experiment and after being treated with a neutral grey oil wash, 
I then gave some texture to the tyre rubber by using carbon black pigment and using the oil as a fixer. The side door was fixed in its closed position using PVA glue, this way it could easily be removed in the future. You need six hands to fit the rotor blades, but once done, all the joints were reinforced with PVA. So that's it for this one guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you haven't already, it'd be great if you subscribe to the channel. Go and check out the website at scalemodelshed.co.uk and you can follow me on Facebook for updates from the shop. So once again thanks for watching, happy modelling everyone and see you next time.